Reflecting on 30 years of World of Warcraft, Blizzard reveals the subscriber numbers, and man, the haters are running for the hills. Let me tell you, I've been seeing for years now, I've been making WoW YouTube content, and all the comments I see have always been, oh, this guy's still making content for this dead game? Oh my god, people still play this dead... You're delusional, Sam. That game is dead. Well, if WoW is dead, you better hope and pray that your game is dead too because uh, it's doing pretty well. Let's talk a little bit about what was revealed. During the Game Developer Conference, Senior Vice President and Warcraft Franchise General Manager John Height shared World of Warcraft's subscriber trends from Legion through Dragonflight, noting the success, failures, and changes made to correct the dwindling numbers from Shadowlands. Shadowlands did damage. We knew that. We felt it. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened and how they changed things to get things back on top. Yeah, if WoW is dead, Sam's got a full head of hair. I appreciate that comment. I really do. As reports by Korean Webs and Vin, Heights talk began with the history of the franchise and how it captured players with a revolutionary RTS that evolved into the MMO and several other game types. While the talk itself is interesting enough, the focal point on the discussion reflects specifically on the success and failures of World of Warcraft, how it built decades worth of fans, why some fans had turned away, and what changes were made to bring them back. The slides depicted subscriber trends from Legion through Dragonflight. All slide images are courtesy of Invin. So here we go. The dark line right here that you see is the actual subscriber numbers and the dotted line is where the expectations were. This is kind of where Blizzard laid out where they thought subscriber numbers would be going into Dragonflight. We're going to see pretty soon uh, the game performed under expectations. But some of these peaks, you know, they're very obvious. We could tell that there were peaks, you know, every time an expansion comes out, a big peak when Classic came out. For obvious reasons, people were craving a Vanilla WoW, and that was a big win for, for Blizzard. And then we see a big peak in Shadowlands, and honestly, I think a lot of Shadowlands had less to do with Shadowlands itself, and uh, more to do with COVID, and people being stuck at home and having nothing else to do, so yeah, why not play some WoW? I know I played a shit ton of Shadowlands, regretfully. I did not enjoy it. I hated Torghast, I hated the Maw, I hated that bald, giant nippled boss that ruined the lore of the Lich King, and everything else that came with it, really. Uh, Castle Nathria was a highlight for me in that expansion, and uh, so was Sire Denathrius, but beyond that, uh, I would like to delete Shadowlands from my memory if I could. But anyways, Shadowlands peaked, and then we see a dip coming. Well, you'll see very soon the dip went deeper than Blizzard thought it would. Unsurprisingly, subscription numbers routinely spike when new expansions come out and gradually fall as stories and content are consumed. Throughout Legion, Battle for Azeroth, and even the launch of Shadowlands, Rao retained a relatively predictable subscriber curve. Supplement Supplemented by the release of WoW Classic. Following Shadowlands, however, numbers failed to recover. The release of Dragonflight showed signs of recovery, but failed to reach expectations of previous curves, indicating a major problem. The players who left weren't coming back. Probably the best thing that ever happened to WoW, honestly. It kind of gave them a come to Jesus moment, or a come to a uh, green Jesus moment, maybe, with Chris Metz and his, his return. But anyways, we can look here, and again, the dotted line is where Blizzard believed the curve would go. The red line is where it actually went. So we see the dip went much further than they believed it would, and the peak never returned, even to the lows of Shadowlands. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. And you could see it, honestly, early in Dragonflight and, and the expansion release and everything. The player numbers just never felt big like they were before. The universe is healed. Mets his back. Yeah, it's it really felt like things weren't as they were. It definitely felt like irreparable damage had been done and Blizzard needed to do something and do something they did. For their part, Blizzard recognized the failures of Shadowlands. As one of the slides notes directly, their response had already been seen. Roadmaps detailing development plans and commitments to eight-week content cadences to continually provide players with new content. I think the uh, constant content, you know, coming out was a great thing. It was, and it really did affect how players' retention was. Players felt like, well, every time you were about to unsub, something new was dropping. Yay, why not continue on playing if you were enjoying the game? So I definitely think content cadence was a big thing. We know that WAD, of course, fell apart due to a lack of content. Honestly, WAD in general, eh, time travel storyline kind of was shit. In general, you know, seeing the old warlords was badass. The opening quest lines for WAD was fun. The zones were beautiful, and uh, the raids were pretty good. The problem was it just stopped. It just stopped. There was nothing to do. But with constant ca content coming out, that was a big change for WoW. The 
sentiment expressed here also lines up with what we learned shortly before the launch of Dragonflight in November 2022. That Dragonflight was the beginning of the third era of Warcraft, representing a fundamental change in the approach of the MMO. Blizzard, I mean, I'm shocked they revealed this stuff, but they revealed some of the inner findings that they had about why things went wrong. And here it is. Basically, they had story and settings for Shadowlands. The afterlife setting wasn't accessible. New antagonist wasn't developed. Yeah, the Jailer sucked, to say the least. Uh, nobody liked him. Nobody felt good about him. And the afterlife setting did feel so far removed from Azeroth that it almost felt like a different game. And last but not least, well-known story heroes were diminished. Yeah, we all know who they're talking about here. We all know who they're talking about. Unfortunately, they really did ruin the uh, lore of Arthas Menethil and the Lich King as a whole, trying to basically build up Zoval, and instead Zoval destroyed the Lich King's lore. That's basically what happened. And it was a big mistake, honestly, and a lot of people, I feel like, the lore does attach people to the game, and when the lore went south, I think a lot of people just decided to dip. As for gameplay, systems didn't evolve with player expectations, borrowed power, yep, that sucked, and not enough variety. Yeah, of course, uh, basically you were pushed into certain certain ways to play the game if you wanted to build up your player's power. So, in essence, you basically had no way to play the game unless you played the game the way you were told to, and that meant doing Torghast, doing horrible grinds in the maw that nobody, wa nobody wanted to be there. It was a horrible thing. Systems didn't evolve with player expectations. Yeah, basically, you just felt everything felt very stagnant. You had silly systems like the shard system. Part of the one of the worst patches probably in WoW history with borrowed power literally for one patch. Getting those shards, that was complete. My god, it gives me a nasty taste of health even to talk about it. But yeah, at least Blizzard recognized it. And then last but not least, community. There were gaps in content, a lack of transparency, and players didn't feel heard. Most definitely, it always felt like Blizzard was not even just not hearing players, but rebutting everything players had to say. Basically tell them we know and you don't. Shut up and go play the game. And uh, that didn't give players a good feeling. A lot of people left in the end. And I think Blizzard did a great job of recognizing that. Uh, the new trends continue with World of Warcraft's World Soul Trilogy, announced at BlizzCon. And thanks to these efforts, it expressed that both the decline in subscribers and the slowdown, there's been a higher rate of subscriber recovery with content updates. Height concluded the lecture by saying that they are looking back on the 30 years of Warcraft has taught them an important lesson. Players are evolving, but they don't want to leave the games they love behind. Blizzard is striving to evolve with them, giving them reasons to stay and continue to enjoy those games they love. And here are the official numbers, boys. Look at that peak. Oh my god. Look at that. Where you have seen, even in Legion, you know, a, a, an expansion that a lot of us consider to be successful. Look at that dip. Look at that dip. I mean, that's a very low dip, right? Equivalent point from Legion launch. We're talking right here. We are now. How far into the expansion? It's almost over. The expansion is almost over. We're about to get the final patch of Dragonflight, and we are at an equivalent peak of Legion. That is insane. Blizzard was correct about Classic Fame yeah, right. But I mean, at least they ate their words, they knew what they had to do, and they did it, right? They did release Classic, which was a great thing for the game. But look at that peak. The crazy thing is, this looks like an expansion launch, but it's not. This is not an expansion launch. Now, we did get Season of Discovery in this timeline. We did get Classic Cataclysm, Hardcore WoW, all that stuff came out. But that's good, because while not all these players are necessarily playing retail, I would still say a decent amount of them are. And remember, not too long ago, I released a video on YouTube, and in that video, I said, oh, the subscriber numbers are probably at 4 million, and I got so much shit in the comment section for that. People saying I was high on copium, delusional, thinking that there's more than 2 million people playing this game. I'd like those people to comment now. Go ahead and eat your words, shit it out, and then eat it again. How about that? Because by estimates, and people have broken down this chart, this peak right now is 7 million subscribers. That's right, 7 million people subscribe, playing $15 a month for a dead game. Insane, right? Yeah. Yeah, insane how a dead game is managing to collect $15 a month from 7 million people. Yeah, but there it is. So uh, WoW's doing really good, and whether it's classic, whether it's Season of Discovery, you know, retail, WoW, shit, even a little bit like Plunderstorm, Blizzard seems to be doing the right things to keep the subscriber numbers up, and uh, and and it feels like it. I've said it before in the game, I said the Hearthstone event very, very, felt very much alive. One of the most alive things I've seen in the game in quite a while, and you could say what you want about if you like the Hearthstone event or not. One thing I could say, and I kept saying during the event while we were playing it, I was like, man, feels like a lot of people are playing the game right now. And it felt really good. I loved seeing that many people. That's why I love open world content. But it's not just open world content. A lot of people were playing. And I think this chart backs that sentiment up now. It backs that feeling up that I did feel like there were a lot of people playing the game. There are. There are 7 million people playing the game, in fact, which is a great thing. I still remember the panel where they sold, where they told someone that they only thought they wanted classic, but they really don't. Yeah, famous last words, right? I've seen a number of people come back recently to the game 
Recently talked to a guy I hadn't seen since Cataclysm. Yes, my own brother resubbed for the first time since BFA, just last week. People are resubbing, the retention rate is high, the content cadence has been great, and we all know with the return of Metzen, come home, he said, the war within, I think a lot of people see promise in the future of the game, and that's why a lot of people came back too. The 7 million number was broken down by a bunch of people, Bellular was one of them, and he gave us that, that number, and uh, it has yet to be remitted, so... It looks very accurate. Very interesting to see Blizzard reveal this stuff again. And uh, PC Mag also showed some love to Blizzard over the weekend, releasing an article about how Blizzard, against all odds, against inflation and everything else, has managed to keep the WoW sub at $15. World of Warcraft subscription price hasn't budged in most parts of the world in 20 years. Long before our collective nostalgia birth WoW Classic, you have to pay $15 a month to Blizzard to spend hours auto-attacking wolves in Elwyn Forest. The only difference now is those wolves are in high definition. Very true. John Height, Warcraft's senior vice president and general manager, spends more time thinking about adding value to the subscription than asking for more money. As of yesterday, we have three games you can play under the same subscription, which hasn't changed in price in over 20 years. He told PC Gamer in an interview, take that inflation. And he's right. I mean, essentially now, the WoW subscription, not only has it not gone up, but gives you more value than it ever has, right? You can get Classic, you get Season of Discovery, which is a different version of the game, of course. And then you get retail, wow. I mean, shit, and even now for a limited time, you get Plunderstorm. So you're like getting 3.5 games out of your $15 a month. And all they've done is add value to the sub which he's totally right about. Even the trading post. You're literally getting Trader's Tender, which was something that wasn't in the game a couple years ago, and now is an added bonus just for the fact that you pay for a sub. So Blizzard has done a great job, I feel like, keeping that, keeping that price point at $15 where it currently is. They have been and proven over time the only MMO that requires a sub to play, basically, and has been able to maintain that pay-to-play model. And what has it done? Well, I think it's yielded great benefits for the player base. I've often been a proponent of not necessarily getting rid of the sub, Maybe rolling it into Game Pass one day, who knows? But I do think the sub is a great thing, and I'd rather be a pay-to-play than a pay-to-win any day. And some people out there will argue, well, the WoW token gave play to win and all that shit. Trust me, World of Warcraft is nowhere near the disgusting shit we see out of other games when it comes to pay to win. Uh, he went on to say, I'm kind of proud of the fact that we've been able to maintain that price point. He said, I'd rather have a big, happy audience than have the risk that that audience gets smaller, but the subscription goes up. Again, they're kind of turning away from that milk the whales mentality, right? They'd rather have a bunch of cows out in a field that they could milk for just $15 a month. And it's a great thing. Today's WoW subscription, of course, buys you Modern WoW, WoW Classic, and Season of Discovery, as I said earlier. It's been great. And for the price, of course, of an expansion, they go on to say you also have to buy expansions. But even the price of expansions, now with the War Within being a $50 price tag minimum, uh, that's still is lower than your typical AAA releases, which now take about $70 out of your pocket when you want to buy them. And I believe that that has been a big success for the game as well. Height says that consistency of WoW's pricing affords the team more room for the kind of experiments that led to Plunderstorm. The wonderful thing about having a subscription model is that we can really double down on gameplay itself. We don't have to create any means to try to get people to engage and give us additional money by unlocking things because everybody has access to everything. His definition of everything, the magazine goes on to say, is not exactly true because, of course, there's mounts that you can buy in the store. But recently, we've seen some of those mounts from the store end up on uh, the trading post. So that's been a nice thing, too, to be able to see finally some of those beautiful mounts actually show up. And all you had to do to get them was play the game, which is what a lot of players have always asked for. We've had some parts of the game that a small percentage of players actually engage with on a regular basis, but they engage with it all the time, Height said. They love it, and I think that the variety of things to do adds diversity to the player base, and that diversity, when you bring people together, especially in guilds and communities, is what makes the game special. I mean, I said it when, when uh, Plunderstorm came out and a lot of people were hating on it, is my main thing was it's not for us. It's not for everybody. If you're a hardcore Mythic Plus runner or raider, Plunderstorm wasn't meant for you. And I understand maybe that you were disappointed that you didn't get something out of that 10.2.6 con Content that was built for the game that you love. But the good thing was it's just healthy for the game because it was built for people that maybe hadn't played in a while. Maybe people who had unsubbed for a little while and it brought them back. Like I said, my brother, unsubbed since BFA, came back because of Plunderstorm and guess what? Now he's thinking about trying Dragonflight. And that's what it was meant to do. The plunder grind is painful. Yeah, they've been trying to, you know, buff that out so people don't have to grind as hard. Uh, there will still be haters uh, when you release this YouTube video. Of course there will be. Yeah, haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate. But the thing is, the numbers always speak volumes. And damn it, 7 million people, you can eat that up. Eat it up, haters.